think Adam Hunt, 62. That's a good chance, too. As we look at Tebow for the first leg, it looked a treble 10. The double 16, this is a lovely start. Game's on the first 14 leg. data to Tebow boot. Trico. Did see a 3 0 to 4 3 yesterday from Trico. What it happened to him? This would be a real resurrection, wouldn't it, if Hendricks were to hit this double and then go on and win the game? I think hitting the double alone. Ten. Just not to be a game Jerry Hendricks will want to forget. 18. And for Trico to go two points clear at the top. It's two double eight. And it's game a whitewash win for the Frenchman. The a comfortable Tebow start to the day. Tebow's the first player to move on to 16 points. I can understand that on that one because it was such a good lie. He really attacked that treble 19 there. There was no thought processes. Van P looks at treble 13 for a big 18. He doesn't miss the big number. And he doesn't miss double top either. Leg. That's a clinical Barry throw. Van but once P. again, no emotion. Very businesslike from Barry Van P. He's had such an interesting career. Treble 8 will be his target when he returns. But under what pressure would he be? 95. Not a lot, really, but if he's down to a finish, it is all about Thornton, this leg. The double eight. That's not intended, Game is it? He surely went for the treble Robert eight Thornton. to leave tops, but it looked clean in the end. Really good visit from Dante. And that puts him on the brink now of what would be a really significant victory. Again, one I like the bullseye of that Very last start 84. there for Robert. 1-2-2 two, two is a real difficult finish, but will he be back? There's the process that Berry goes through every time he gets down to the finish. So 68 left. He's, the fact that Thornton's on a finish means it's game the ball. Game shot on the match. And it was labelled as a Berry blockbuster Van game. Pitt. It was a blockbuster finish there from Berry Van Pee. He was superb for the majority of that game, and that's exactly the start he wanted. Very pensive Robert Thornton walking off as we look at the stats there. A very professional game from both players. Excellent on the outer ring from both people. But it's Barry, v Barry Ventia that moves on to join Adam Hunt on 14 points. And we see Adam Hunt. He's up next against Scott Winder. Paul Hogan, Stu Wilson join the party. Double seven here for Hunt. Going oh, that's a brilliant finish. Leg. And maybe just Adam what he Hunt. needed. Because it could have got messy from there. So to stay in it, treble 18. Double 12. Going east. Game's on the fifth leg. And finding Scott the target, Winder. Winder. It's messy again from Winder. Two darts for the match, Adam Hunt. Hunt game goes top of the, the table. Adam he had Hunt. his hairy moments in that game then. Scott Winder, who's playing that role of the spoiler. But Adam Hunt from 1-0 down does take a 4-2 victory in the end and return to the top of the table. A nice solid 87.50 from the man from County Durham. 3 180s for Scott Winder. Some positives there, but it's the double trouble once again. And next up, it's Jerry Hendricks against Robert Thornton. Since we moved here to our brilliant venue in Portsmouth. Brilliant. Double six. That Game is absolutely superb. Leg. Robert Thornton. Well, Robert Thornton raises the level in this game. I mean, requires 67. No, he's going for treble 17. And end up on tops in the end. And Game that's what he gets. And that is the end. The 4 1 win for Thornton. Thornton. Made hard work of it in the middle of the match there. We had a bit of a drop off. But Jerry Hendricks has just not been at the races today, and Robert Thornton takes full advantage. A 4 1 success for the Scotsman, a 90 average for him, 4 out of 12 on the doubles, and he had that brilliant 1 2 6 checkout to get the party started. Points on the board for Thornton, two off the top two who play next when Adam Hunt meets Thibaut Tricot. Because 1 2 9 is horrible. Yeah, so he's taken away the, the, the blockers there there by finding the treble 20. So for the win, 36. for a very convincing one as well. And to go top of the table, game Adam Hunt shot on the match. Adam sees Hunt. off the Frenchman, Thibaut Tricot. It's a 4-1 success for the North East Darts player who moves north to the top of the group. 91.34 the average uh, 
four out of seven success on the doubles. That H E check out that gave him the breaker throw, very important indeed in there. And he moves clear by two points at the top of the table from Tree Cole and miles clear of the chasing pack now, which includes Berry Van Peer. And he's up next against Scott Winder. You can see a determination in his face there, Winder. He doesn't want to let that lead slip already, having done the Whoa, hard work to break Berry. 180. He's grimaced when he hit a 60, knowing that Van Peer was likely to do something like that. Whoa, 180. What a response. Yeah, I'm just sort of sat back watching what's going on here. Whoa, 180. What's going on? He's three 180s on the spin. Let's have another one, Scott. Oh, no, he's on 178. 96. Very required. Well, two 41. of them came for this man. So having been broken straight away, this is bounce Game back Berry, isn't it? Leg. Brilliant stuff. Berry Van Pitt. 11 data. Very required. 48. Now, can he navigate past that dart? He can. He was on the fourth leg. Put it between the posts. Berry Van Pitt. And has a 3-1 lead. Game and it's a pretty straightforward in the end for Barry Venter. He moves up to second place and the trials and tribulations for poor Scott Winder continue. But he has a massive smile on his face. He seems to be enjoying it. But, but for Barry, he goes into second place and he's probably eyeing his final game of the day. A massive crunch game with Adam Hunt. That could be the biggest game of the day. But next up, it's Jerry Hendricks against top of the table, Adam Hunt. Man, the puns. I think Adam has to be very, very careful here, but this is a great response from Adam Hunt. Whoa, and how many times have we seen players Jerry do that recently? Well, this is a different Jerry Hendrix than what we've seen so far. 18 for tops. Double 11. Four that was a, a kind of and I mean, required dead 30. cat maximum from Adam Hunt as well. He intentionally left double 15, just wanted to get Owen Binks exercising Angel his vocal cords to make Adam Jerry Hunt. think... Bust it, Adam. He'll go tops, tops. And Game what a way to finish the match. match. It wasn't vintage Hunt, Hunt, but that is a way to win a game. And for Jerry Hendricks, second place if he wins this 81. one. 4 nil. but that is looking less likely after a really stellar leg from Scott here. Double 16, Game wow. Four flag. A dozen Scott data. Won. Where has that been all week? Robbie requiring 47. For the match. Go it's not the way he went for, but match. it was a very tidy Robert performance against Thornton. a much improved Scott Winder. I think Scott will take the positives in that game. And once again, that smile is still there. But it's business for Robert Thornton. A couple of wins on the bounce there for Robert. He does go into second place now on 16 points, but the players behind him do have an extra game to go. But that was a very good game. An all Scottish class, but it was Robert Thornton that takes the 4 1 victory. Massive game pending. Tibor Tricol against Barry Van Pia. Classic. Last start. 167. Oh, is this the Tungsten Tide Turner? 142. Well, he couldn't. Tibor Make a wave, only a ripple. And now Trico will have the chance to complete an astonishing win. Game it's a sensational win. Ooh la la from Tibor Trico. 4 0 victory over the oh so impressive Berry Van Pia as he put pay to his chances. And maybe, just maybe, the big winner there was Adam Hunt because he's already played Tibor Trico and put him in a fantastic position. But the, all about the Frenchman. Just look at those numbers, 98.56, a whitewash win. Excellent on the outer ring. Super, super darts on Tibor. And next up, it is top of the table, Adam Hunt, in a massive clash again against Robert Thornton. He Robert pitched. 140. Perfectly pitched. Will he go tops, tops? Oh, perfectly pitched. And it was almost perfectly pitched. And I mean, required 32. We both stepped up about out of our seat there. It's easy for me to say. 
Game show number three. Two, Adam Hunt is continuing to fight, but Robert Thornton has had a dart with this match. Never, Never write him off. 40. It would be some story, wouldn't it? Typical Thornton. And Group Game A has just got very, very interesting. Robert it's a big, Thornton. big win for Robert Thornton. Over the top of the table, Adam Hunt. It was a great game of darts, but the Scott is just peaking at the right time. Interesting times over the next hour. Who's going to win Group A? We still have absolutely no idea. But next up, it's Barry Van Peer against Jerry Hendricks. Double 14. Game shot in the first leg. Different Barry way for Van going on 104. A double double. A couple of singles will get him a go at a double. Or a treble will get him two darts. Game shot in the and third And he halves the deficit, but Jerry not only Hendricks. that, he's just broken Barry Van Peer. Those kind of things go wrong, don't they? Yeah, feels like the only bounce outs that we remember are. Jerry and Scott is double 10. Game shot in the fourth leg. Barry Van Peer. Barry Pretty Van straightforward, Peer. just not up to the standard of Berry. Is it time for Berry to bury Jerry? It Game is. Van Peer the gets the victory. Barry the Van Peer. The 4-1 success that keeps him in the hunt. He is definitely taking his time now he's got down to a finish. It was aiming for 42 there. It's 33 off. He's halved his score. So double 16. Game oh, shot the second wow. leg. Scott but before Wander. this match, it was an argument that Thibaut Treacle was in the best position. Is there a, a way back here for Thibaut? Double two. Game oh, he sneaks it in just under the wire. Thibaut Treacle. It's rock and roll motion. When he gets it right, he's good. But it's round about now. You, you fear from him, but it's a chance for Treacle. Game shot in the sixth flag. From absolutely Thibaut nowhere. Treacle. He was dead and buried. Yeah. For a it's famous going victory you feel for him. It's been a tough, tough Group A campaign, but he has never given up. He approaches the hockey. Game shot and winder the match. plays a blinder. Scott Winder. As he beats Thibaut Tricot. A very difficult loss there for the Frenchman, but once again, magnanimous in defeat. But Scott Winder, such a difficult, difficult Group A campaign. But look at him. Absolutely delighted with that victory. And fair play to him. That's all the effort he's put into that. And Wow, what does that do to the table? And what it does mean is that we go into the final game very much all to play for, and the next game is huge. Barry Van Peer versus Adam Hunt. Don't miss it. So Barry Van Peer to put himself in pole position. Double two. And he 14. fails to find it as well. All these Adam darts. Four. Have something at stake for all four players in this fight. Absolutely spot on, Chris. That's exactly what I was thinking. A wry smile there from Adam Hunt. I wonder if he knows the importance of this leg. Oh, no score. Wrong bed. Very required too. And that might put his hopes to bed. Along with the hopes of Thibaut Treacle. Great camera angle just to show what Adam's going through, but it's all about Berry Van Peer now. Go the target was 4 0. It was a little bit messy Barry at the Van end. Peer. You have to feel for Adam Hunt. It was a brilliant Group A campaign, but he faltered just right at the end. It's Berry Van Peer was in pole position right now, and out goes Adam Hunt and Thibaut to call. But it's Robert Thornton who has the opportunity still to top the group, and he's up next in another massive game against the Frenchman Thibaut to call. You can hear them talking about the situation. Maybe then he'll tighten up like Adam Hunt did. And how much of a, a Game disaster was that day. defeat to Tebow Scott Winder for Thibaut Treacle? It could have been very much in his hands here. It requires 75. Not the easiest out. Start with treble 17. And that tra transition from 18 to tops. Game shot the successful third, before for Thibaut. Thibaut is Treacle. again... Robert Thornton knows he's in a fight, and this is just very typical. Robbie required right 36. Then, to take it to the death. Game oh, he's the done it. Flesh. How does he do Robert it? Robert Thornton. Game Thibaut Treacle takes it, match. and in doing Thibaut so, Tricol. condemns Robert Thornton to Group C and crowns Berry Vampire as the Group A winner. Robert Thornton disappears quickly.
He had his opportunity, but it's Treacle who takes the match. A good performance, really, for the Frenchman. Thornton didn't miss a dart at double, but crucially, in that last leg, didn't get one. And instead of finishing first, the Thorn finishes fourth. We do have one more game to come. It's to see who finishes bottom of the table, but confirmation that Berry Van Peer has finished top. To finish with back-to-back -back victories. Game and Winder wins a 4-1 success Scott against Winder. Jerry Hendricks. This pair will reunite tomorrow in Group C, but it's Winder who gets a victory in the final match of a really dramatic group. This duo didn't have much part in that. They're joined at the bottom. They go into Group C. The other player going into that group has finished 12 points ahead of them. That's Robert Thornton, Hunt Tree Cole, Go into Group B. Van Pier tops the table. But Scott Winder won his first match in the group and his last two. He signs off with a 4-1 win over Jerry Hendricks. Yeah, quite the book-ending job there as far as Scott Winder is concerned. Glenn Dowen has joined me up here on the balcony to assess what we have seen. Goodness me, we're going to need a while to assess all we've seen today because we thought yesterday was dramatic. Today, ramped up a notch. Yeah, wacky was the word I sort of just stood here thinking there because at one point I thought Adam Hunt had it. Then I thought Robert Thornton was going to do this most amazing story. Then Tricol became favourite. And Barry Van P, I thought it was a great interview between the pair of you as well, just to get his understanding and the fact that he knew exactly what he needed to do. So we were chatting in comms about, I wonder if they know the permutations, the scenarios of what's going on. But in the end, it was a great day. Three, three players finishing on 20 points and that unbelievable statistic of a last leg for Thornton of either top in the group or Group C. Bizarre. We'll discuss it a little bit more in just a second, but let's give you the results that set us this scenario, this situ of chaos here at the live lounge. So 15 games been and gone. And in the end, it was Barry Van Peer who thought himself was actually out of the race, out of the running, who came out on top. But when you win a lot of tournaments and you're at the, at the peak of your game, which it seems like Barry is right now, number one on the Challenge to Order of Merit, Dutch Open champion, one of the biggest events on the amateur calendar. When you're in that type of form and moments like that arise, surely you just see the winning line instead of any pressures. It's funny because when you're not winning games, Barry Van Peer does not win that competition today. But the fact he's used to winning now, sort of like you get a little bit of luck. And, you know, just the way he was hitting them doubles. I mean, Adam Hunt in that match there, three out of three going into that game. He knew I, he had to beat either Barry Van Peer or Robert Thornton and just didn't get to the challenge in the end. And Van Peer just did what he needed to at the end. We'll talk about Barry a bit more in a second, but what on earth is Adam going to be feeling right now? Well, I know Adam's more than anybody out there and he will be desperately disappointed. He's someone who'll... He'll, he'll say to me, no, no, I'm fine, I'll, at least I'm in Group B, but I know inside he will be raging. I just felt at the end he tightened up, especially on that first dart as well. He's got a, a unique throw where replication isn't key for him. That first dart is just the beginning of the mechanism for that throw because the third dart is so effortless and I just felt he tightened up when he didn't need to. But I suppose the important thing now is to put it to the back of his mind ahead of a stint in Group B tomorrow night. And he will. The fact he's got that extra maybe 10 hours to, uh, to contemplate, he's got, you know, he's got good people around him, he's good family, etc. He'd be desperately disappointed and he's a type of player who loves to play darts and an extra couple of nights you know, might be good for him. He might once again get over that disappointment. I think he's just playing as well as I've seen him for 18 months. Well, this was the game that sealed it for Barry Van Peer. It was Thibaut Dracol getting the better of Robert Thornton. Robert, who has incredibly won more legs than any other player in the group, yet finished fourth. It was saying it was incredible. I, I loved every second of it. And, and that match reminded me of a man who was frustrated that he can't top the group against someone who knew a victory would. And again, Robert Thornton, despite everything that he's won, you know, he just tightened up a little bit himself. And Thibaut was just so free-flowing. But I thought it was going to be a real romantic story at the end because uh, fairy, t fairy tales do come true because Robert was never in this competition and he could have gone top with his final dart. And that's what we were writing as the conclusion. Robert Fulton in Group C. Chaos. It's, I mean, it's not a bad group to be in. I mean, he's the headline act, but uh, I mean, there's, there's one or two players there, but I think, it'd be, I think it'd be fine. In fact, I think a couple of the guys going into Group B in, in, in Adam and Tebow will be fine in that group as well. But there's still some cracking players to come as well. And, you know, you want to get the job done and it's Barry Van Peer who can sit back and relax.
You most certainly can, and he'll like the look of this table now, which we're going to bring on screen. Three players tied on 20 points at the end of 15 matches. They couldn't be separated. Bay Van Pier, top courtesy of legs difference. Robert Thornton finished on 18 points, and that is only good enough for an appearance in Group C. Whilst for Scott Winder, he won his last two matches, so him and Jerry Hendricks both tied on six points in the group. Let's talk about Barry Van Pier once again then, because amongst everything else that we spoke about up here on the balcony, this could be his last time here at the Super Series. He's got a massive margin of lead at the top of the challenge to order of merit. He's going to be playing at tournaments like the Grand Slam, you feel, should be playing at the World Championships, you feel, at the end of the year and maybe move on to the professional circuit from January. But you can tell that he wants this title. This is something that probably will finish off a set of amateur events. It didn't showcase to me that he, this is a real priority to him. I, I thought he was, a, you know, he lacked a little bit of something. I thought he was a little bit lacklustre on stage, a little bit moody, a little bit... You know, sometimes I just want him to maybe smile just a little bit because he's got a wonderful personality. He's a great guy. I thought the interview, as I said, just sort of showcased that and, and let people know what he's all about. Uh, but he, he sort of comes across as fairly negative as, in his approach and he's got so much positivity about him. So I think there's an extra 5%, 10% still to come from Berry Van Pier, but an exceptional player. And despite not being at his best fully throughout that campaign, tops it in one of the hardest group years we've seen for a long time. And in terms of Saturday night, how would you rate his chances with the, obviously the players coming in and the players already know in this week? Favourite. I mean, he's there, he's topped that group and there's more gears to come. And with a crowd in here as well and the form that he's in, he'll be the favourite. You most certainly will. Right, let's talk a little bit then about later on this week because tomorrow we're going to see a player that you know very well in Robert Grundy in Group C. Since we last saw him here, well, he's gone on to win his first Challenge Tour title of his career and it's in the top 10 of the Challenge Tour Order of Merit in 2023 and is playing some amazing darts right now. Uh, in 2019, I was playing my best darts. I went over to the PDC and I was flying and then one week they were short for Super League. I'm one of the best players everyone's talking about me i go to a place in hartlepool against a guy who can't afford to travel knew how good he was because he's beaten me over the years and absolutely destroyed me and there's a rob grundy in every town and city in the uk now he's got a good sponsor a good manager he's now traveling about and he's now telling everybody how good he is because rob grundy is the real deal he most certainly is and then in group b Chaz Barstow. Now, we rax lyrical about him because we know the levels he's got. Last time he was here, he'd been working on his house and had family issues and was nowhere near his best. I'd be keen to ask and see how he performs. And uh, Paul Hogan as well, a guy who changed my life. I'm so, there's so much more to come from, but Chaz Barstow, at his best, can destroy anybody. It's going to be an interesting couple of days to come in Group B and Group C, and we're looking forward to it, aren't we? Absolutely. It was a fantastic way to end that group here. We, you know, you dream of moments in the comms box where you're down to that, and that statistic of being either top of the table or Group C, that will live in the memory. Do you want the good news or the bad news? Good. You don't have to see me for another 24 hours, lucky Lovely you. Lovely jubbly. Right, we'll see you at one o'clock sharp tomorrow here on the, on the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. And then we're going to be on Sporty Stuff TV from three o'clock for the beginning of Group C. Well, as far as Group A was concerned, it was a bit of a roller coaster, wasn't it, Glenn? But it was Berry who was peerless. See you later.